Okay, this is a bit of a follow-up Q&A after the big uh, finale for Mocktober. I thought it would just kind of be fun to do like a, a Rose Anvil 2 version of the finale where I answer your guys' questions and just get into some more of the fine details and really go over what you guys want to know about the Mockto, Mocktober slash Simbers and January series that we did. So I got all the boots to my right. I've got Daniel Skeen to my left that's going to be basically producing this video and making sure I don't screw anything up and also asking the questions because I haven't actually read any of the questions. So anything to say, Daniel Skeen, for your first time on the hot mic? You love your mom? <laughs> yes. Okay, let's start. Off. You got to say something. Um, beans. That's right. Give it the beans. Okay, give it the beans. I'll sit it with the first question. Uh, at Tobacco Motorwear asks. Hey, that's our homies. They're from Utah. Oh, yeah. They they uh, they're just down the road from us. They make a bunch of really cool like Kevlar infused like riding pants. They have some boots and they have a bunch of really cool gear that's actually made for motorcycle riding instead of just repurposed stuff. Then they just put like a Motorwear badge on it, like half the other brands. So what is Tobacco Motorwear's question? They ask. Mock toes can be made three ways. Is there a best way to get that mock toe style? That is a good question. There's he mentioned there's three types. There's the one piece like you see in a NYX where it's just a regular vamp, but they've created a mock toe stitch with a special machine that bunches the leather up, giving it that little rib. So that's a single piece. A two piece is like the red wings where you have a piece that wraps around the side of the vamp and then a top piece that is sewn together that comes to a point. Um, the, the disadvantage with that is it can split and it can wear out faster than a single piece, but you, you do have a little bit more height uh, capabilities by extending that sidewall up. And it is definitely more of a traditional look and more just a traditional way of doing a mock toe. The third way is similar to what you see in the Grant Stone filled boots where you have your top piece, you got your sidewall and an extra piece that sometimes wraps underneath if it's a true moccasin construction, like Russell moccasins. This one is just the look of it. And so which one is best and which one should you do? It depends on what you want to do. If you like the really clean look, the single piece is a really classy way to do it. The traditional way, the two piece. And then if you really want the, like the real traditional moccasin look, the three piece is the way to do it. Shout out to, to Tobacco Motorwear. At Ace Rick nineteen sixty seven asks, "Why the heck are there so many Alden Indy fanboys?" That's a good question because when we made that video, we didn't like put any extra effort into it. We didn't prep any extra. It was just a regular video for us because I'm more in the work boot world and more like the heritage and less in the dress and uh, really refined boot world. And I don't know why there's so many fans and so such a, a rabid fan base because they, they really kind of exploded on us after we post that video. And it surprised me how many people there were that really, really care about their Aldens. And we kind of go into this a little bit more in depth in the Stitch Down podcast that I just appeared on. I'll put a link to it in the description. They're the guys that do the Patina Thunderdome. They're really knowledgeable in all the spots that I'm not, especially with like the more classy footwear and the dressier footwear. And so it was a really interesting conversation because I, I obviously have my view on Alden's being overpriced and not necessarily being worth it. They have their opinion and view, which is that um, it is worth it and there's certain reasons why they're worth it. So if you want more of an in-depth dive, go check out that podcast because their podcast is good just generally, but it's fun that I was able to be on it. And that is a long answer to a question that I once again have forgotten. What was the question? Uh, why are there so many Alden Indy fanboys? Yeah, that's a good, well, obviously the Alden Indy is named after Indiana Jones, so it has that big movie hype and potential behind it. They've been famous for a really long time. And despite the price, they are, they are a good boot. I never have once said they're a terrible boot. They're a good boot, just very pricey. At Sleazy Cowboy. Ooh. I know the Clark's Wallabies are a true moccasin construction. Are there any other that are? Russell Moccasins, Yucatan, Yucatan. Um, and then there's a few other guys that are still making, uh, Rancourt, I think is another one that still does those traditional. Rancourt's up in Maine. And I think all, the, all three of those are actually US based companies that are still just hanging on to that traditional way of making mock toe boots. So there's still some good ones out there. At Richard 2.3. 
The Grant Stone Field Boot is gorgeous, but would it last in Colorado? I camp and off-road a lot and would feel guilty for tearing it up. I think it, I think it would last, but it's not a work boot. You know, it, it's, it's built to the quality that you see in Red Wing with the leather insole but, and even better with the leather midsole. Uh, but the leather is, is more of a dressier leather. Like this particular one I have, I think, is a veg tan, but they do have like a bison that probably is a little bit more durable. But I would say it's gonna be just about as durable as a Red Wing. Um, there's really no reason to think that it won't be. Maybe the outsole might wear a little bit differently because it's a, a name brand, Grant Stone outsole. But I would say it's pretty on par. If it's, if anything, it might be just slightly less durable than a Red Wing, but barely. And that would be an easy argument to make both ways. Another Grant Stone field boot question from at Joe Mar- Mar- Joe Montana. <laughs> 1990, yeah. Uh, for the Grant Stone Field Boot, what material is the collar padding? Should it last, in your opinion? This looks like it's a suede. It's, so it looks like it's a true suede. I don't see any grain in there, and if I remember correctly, it's already getting dark outside. But yeah, it looks like just a suede. Um, it's a double layered, obviously, because you've got it wrapped around front and back, and it's back with foam, and it's double stitched to the upper. So I wouldn't stress it too much. It might wear out if you really, really tie them super tight around the top of your ankle and you're constantly flexing that suede. But it, I don't think it's, that's not really a spot where you wear out boots. It, you know, usually you're going to wear out the outsole or the counter cover or um, blow out a stitching somewhere like around the ball of your foot before you blow out a collar. So I wouldn't be stressed about it. At Arlen5512, if mock toes were a lolly or sweet, what <laughs> flavor would they be? A lolly or a sweet? I thought a lolly's were sweets. This must be a guy from the UK. I was so confused by the question that I forgot what the actual question is. What is it? <laughs> if mock toes were a lolly or a sweet, what flavor would they be? Oh, that is kind of an interesting question. So basically, like, out of what candy bar would Americanize it? Yeah, okay. I would honestly, probably a Snickers. Because you get, it's a very versatile candy bar you've got the nuts for your protein and your your good fats you've got the chocolate for the sweet you've got the caramel for the sweet you've got the nougat for the sweet you got the salt for the salt it's a versatile candy bar it's not just like it's not just a chunk of chocolate there's a lot of facets to it it's delicious you can take it anywhere they're brown they're <laughs> they're brown a lot of boots are brown so i would say mock toe boots are the sneaker nope <laughs> i would say mock toe boots are the snickers of the candy bar world. That's the official Rose Anvil statement. Do you have do you disagree? I agree. Cause what, what else would there be? Like is there any please don't fire me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like an almond joy by having like an almond on top, mm, similar yeah. to a, a mock toe stitch. Yeah, yeah. That's a good question for the comment section to drive traffic and engagement. Let us know what you think a mock toe candy bar is. Let us know what candy bar you think the mock toe is of the boot world. I don't know how to phrase that question. At Chris of at Chris, good prep work. <laughs> At Chris of the Theo, Theo, does exclamation point this toe stitching make a mock toe less water resistant? It does. It's got to because you're punching holes in the upper, and if it's a two piece mock toe, you've got that ridge that water could after it splits, you could have water seep into. The stitching will always leach in a little bit more uh, water than leather will unless it's like treated. But is it enough to really be concerned? Not really, unless you're really mucking around in water all day, because most of them are lined. And so it would have to go through the, the thread and then the lining through your socks, then finally hit your foot. So technically less water resistant, but really not enough unless you're really using them in water on a daily basis, in my opinion. At Almighty Lido 674, which is the most comfortable, the Indy, Red Wing, or Grant Stone? That's a good one because uh, the Aldens, because of how wide that last is and how it's deceptively wide because they bring it to a point and they banana shape it over to make room for your big toe, the Aldens are comfortable. I don't think anyone can dispute that the Aldens aren't comfortable or they can't dispute that they are comfortable um, compared to the Red Wings. I would say they're probably more comfortable because the Red Wings are a little narrow. The 1907s do have a wider toe box. Um, and then the Grant Stones, the Grant Stones actually do have a pretty wide toe box too because Grant Stones lasts are pretty wide. Between the three of them, they're comfortable for different reasons, but all around comfort, if you're just wearing them casually around the office, around town, going on dates, I would say the Aldens, uh, but the problem is like one, like the Red Wings and the, the Grant Stones have a wedge sole. 
So if we're talking strictly of the footbed and your foot being in the boot, it doesn't matter what outsole, all the Aldens will be, probably be the most comfortable for how wide it is. For walking comfort, I would almost rather have a wedge sole. So if it's wide enough, I, I might put the, the Red Wings above it for walking and work because of the wedge sole. But I think you can also get Aldens in a wedge sole. S but just on the surface, I'm, I'm gonna say final answer, Aldens. Yeah, that's we worked through it. I think Aldens is probably the most comfortable out of the three. Okay, next question. At Neil before Zod. Wow. <laughs> says, what, what's the best mock toe for hiking? Hmm, that's a good question because it depends on the type of hiking you do. Because here on, in the West, we do a lot of like really high elevation and like limestone, rocky, rugged, like uh, tears up your outsole uh, hiking versus back East. It's a lot of flatland hiking where you don't actually gain it in a lot of elevation. There's not a lot of uh, rocky terrain uh, comparatively. So it depends, you know, if you're really in the rocky stuff, you're going to want something with a really heavy lugged outsole, like the Nyx that have a V100 outsole. These are going to be your best for like real rugged hiking. Um, casual hiking, if you're just going for comfort and you're not doing a lot of really heavy stuff, limbs have a lugged sole that's rubber, so it's going to be grippy, but it's a super wide toe box and it's, it's a fairly low drop while still having some foam to give you some comfort. So it depends on your hiking. So I would say between like some of the nicks, some of the limbs, anything but the wedge soles. You don't want to hike around in a wedge sole because they'll flatten out really quick and you'll be slipping all over the place. Same goes for like the Aldens with the um, with the cork cork uh, nitrile, I think, outsole. This is this is also something we kind of got into in the Stitch Down podcast of the difference of what does grippy mean to different people. Because to me, this will never be grippy for hiking because of the hiking we do here in the West. But if you're just hiking in flatland or you consider bopping around a city hiking, this is probably fine. So tough answer, but uh, stay away from wedge soles, stay away from smooth outsoles. And the more rugged and like chunky the hiking you're going to do, the more rugged and chunky the outsole needs to be. At Nick FSU 23 what's your thoughts on the Alden Indy? Now you have been wearing them for a while. Have your opinions changed since the video after wear? Yeah, that's so that, that's why we're doing this big, long six month review uh, wear review, because I don't get a lot of time in boots. And with that, with as much uh, controversy, controversy, backlash and divert, uh, well, not diversity. What is the word I'm looking for? Divisiveness in the Alden video. I really wanted to wear them. So it's really hard for me to, to say yet because we're only halfway through that six month uh, wear review. But one thing I have noticed in the last couple of weeks that I didn't have a chance to talk about on that Stitch Down podcast is because you have that cork layer in the midsole, it causes a high pressure point on the outsides of the insole where that rib underneath the insole attaches the insole to the upper, the upper to the outsole. It creates a almost like a boating effect on the insole. So you have a high spot in your pinky, a high spot in your big toe, and I can start to feel that. And so that's a, it might flatten out. I'm not saying it's my final opinion, but it is a, a spot that's caused me a little bit of discomfort that didn't I didn't feel initially. Um, but for the most part, they're nice and wide. They're comfortable, comfortable to walk around and just like the, around the office, around the, even the back of the shop or around town, pretty comfortable. But I'll wait to give my full analysis and opinion and official statement for the final review. So that's your half answer. Okay. At Drew0408, best insole for mock toes. Well, best insole. I have honestly haven't done a whole lot with insoles because they're just so cheap and so easy to swap out either way. And they're so hard to really put a lot of science into. And there's so many marketing gimmicks around it that I don't really have an insole recommendation aside from if you have these like really traditionally made boots, if you throw a really fat insole in it, like what comes in like thorough goods or like sneakers that have it's really thick, it's going to throw off the, the sizing for you. So go get a Spinco insole if you need something to be give your boots a little bit more comfort if if they're a traditionally made boot. And I'll put a link to those in the description. They're like 20 bucks on Amazon and uh, we have Amazon affiliates. So use the link and we'll make like 10 cents off of it. So Spinco's, they're nice and thin, don't take up the, a lot of room and you don't usually have to mess with your sizing. At Paradoxologist 9, no, oh. <laughs> not 8. Paradoxologist? So he's, he's a professional paradox person, almost the right. paradox in and of itself. How meta of this guy. Will the girls be impressed if I buy a pair of Nick Nick's mock toe boots? I think they will be. I think uh, even if they don't understand the quality, you'll be an extra. You'll be at least an extra 
two inches tall. They're going to see that you really commit to your style of ruggedness. And uh, I personally believe that... <laughs> Actually, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can say that on camera. I was going to say, like, I think uh, women are naturally drawn towards more rugged men. That's not controversial, is it? Let the 8% of the women that watch, actually, it's probably even less on the Roseanne 2 channel, the 2% of you women that watch this channel that aren't already into heritage goods, do you like a man in a nice, rugged, manly boot or a little dainty white van sneaker or something? It's the boots. That's your answer. Hopefully that was uh, appropriate for channel. It's hard to know these days. YouTube's like uh, demonetizing videos if you say a single swear word. And you just never know. We're at the we're at the whim and the desires and the standards of the ever changing YouTube community or YouTube uh, policy and rules. It's annoying. I hate it. But I love you, YouTube. Don't don't bla uh, blacklist us. At Reed CK Knits. How did the Echoes to Peace Mokto keep the water out? How did, okay, so how did, they're not waterproof, are they? I don't think they ever claim they're waterproof, the Echoes, right? No. Um, if they did keep the water out, it's just because, like I mentioned previously, you have a lining in the vamp, and so it just takes another layer to, to go through before it's going to get your feet wet. But I don't think they've ever claimed they're waterproof, and I don't even know if we did a waterproof test, but they're not waterproof, just naturally water resistant. And the sun's going down, so this whole <laughs> video, I probably started off very pale, and now I'm just getting more and more tan as this video goes along. Okay. At Ryan M. Kintz, 1907 versus 875, is the 1907 storm welt really an improvement? No, it's not because it's fake. It's not even a storm welt. It's a fake storm welt. So it's not improved in any way. If anything, it grabs more dirt because of that little lip that it causes. And it just looks worse, in my opinion, as it starts folding down. And uh, I just don't like fake things on a heritage boot. But the nice thing about these 1907s, that's, that's the one with the fake welt that I'm complaining about, is they're a wider last. And so if you don't like the, nine, the 875s or the 877s, they're too narrow for you. The 1907s are going to be wider and more comfortable because it's built on a different last. And that's, that's really the main difference between these two boots. At N Skeleton, how have you not tried the Parkhurst Mokto? That's a good question. I think uh, I, I know the, the owner of Parkhurst. You know, we've chatted a couple times, and I, I think they've recently been dealing with some production issues. And so I just haven't wanted to do a review, and I wasn't quite sure of where they're going to be made and how they're going to be made and what's going on with Parkhurst. But I do love Parkhurst. They have some really nice styles. Um, and they do it in a way that similar to Grant Stone, where it's like a half dressy, half heritage, and they, they you can wear them in a lot of different situations. But I just uh, over the the fall there was some stuff up in the air. But I think would definitely hit them up and do a review this fall or whenever they want to hit hit us up. And once they get all their stuff figured out. At TV Co. Five Six Two. Best way to whiten the sole to almost brand new. What saddle soap would you recommend? You can use the white saddle soap. We had a our most popular video it has like ten million views. Is us cleaning a mock toe boot. Just follow those instructions and guide. You basically just use white saddle soap and use a spoon, and you're you're squeezing the dirt out of the little pores in the outsole. That's like a blown rubber outsole. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So you can just watch that. It's just easier than me explaining it for twenty minutes here. At Luke Man Jawawi. <laughs> Do you think Mokto need to have steel shank in midsole to be better? I wouldn't say it needs it to be better. I think it's depending on dependent on what you're doing in the Mokto. If you're working in them, you might want a shank because a shank's gonna stabilize the boot as you wear it so that it doesn't I don't know if I can do this with my mic. If you don't have a shank, it's gonna bend like that. If you do have a shank, it won't do that. So if you're climbing around on ladders, you want a shank. If you're hitting shovels with your foot, you're gonna want a shank. Um, but for casual walking around, you don't need it per se because of how flat the outsole is. You don't, there's just no need for a shank if you're not standing on the arch of your foot on anything. At Dylan 5446, why don't mock toes have normal tread on them? You can get them with normal tread, but it's just the traditional way. Because as far as I understand, the real popularity of mock toes came from the iron working era where people were using these for steel work and iron work and big skyscrapers. At least that's like the heritage spin on it. And so they were like, they, they used the mock toes and the, the wedge sole back in that day. And so it's just been something that's been perpetuated because of the original design of them. And still today, they're, they have um, wedge soles on them. But wedge soles are more comfortable. 
because they're not as dense and, and they have a little bit more squish. They wear, they wear out faster, but they are thicker too. So it's kind of a give and take. You sacrifice longevity and durability for comfort. Um, and uh, but I like I like the wedge soles. They're, they're really comfortable, and I almost prefer them over like the lug soles if I'm just cruising around in them and not like hiking or doing something really heavy duty. At Modern Hispano, qual mock toe is el más comfortable? Qual? Qual? Oh, it's like in Spanish. What does qual mean in Spanish? Which, I think. Oh, which? Oh, the echo mocks. Which mock toe is the most comfortable? Echo mocks. You literally have an inch of foam not just any foam, like memory foam underneath your foot. You know, it's not gonna be as durable, but for casual wear, if you're just wanting something that you don't, are not, you're not gonna worry about resoling, you wanna be super comfortable with the same like wedge sole look with the, the traditional like orangey leather, the Echo Mock has gotta be the most comfortable mock toe, hands down. Like look how thick this insole is, it's ridiculous. It's like three times the thick of, as thick as any other insole. Now these are from at YouTube community, or the YouTube community. At ZTX2199, would you consider doing more of those after 1,000 mile videos? It would be cool for this year's Mocktober if we have all of them cut open to see if they still hold up. The hard thing with that is I just don't have the time on foot to do it. I have to wear so many different boots so much, so much and I only have so much of my own time to break in my own pairs of boots that uh, I probably won't because a thousand miles, even though it'll only take me 10 days to do it, that's 10 days that I'm not wearing like the Aldens for an in-depth review, or I'm not wearing like a, my own personal favorite pairs, like whether it's the Cordovan Knicks or I just got a pair of West Coast in, I, you know, or even like the, the Viber you really have. So not, I won't be wearing them. We might figure out a, a way for someone else to wear them for a thousand miles, but for me, it's not in the cards. At Mars 23 Air, I'd like to know which of these boots, in your opinion, are best suited for winter slash cold weather. Specifically, traction on ice and overall warmth. Love both your channels. He's asking me which, which mock toe is the most slip resistant, essentially. Yeah. Um, anything with the Vibram, oh, what do they call it? Winter grip or something? It's, it's the outsole that has like the little flakes of things that somehow grip onto ice, and they're actually really really good at getting traction. I know Keen uses it. I don't know if any of the Pacific Northwest guys do, but you can you can find it. Just look for that. I'll put a I'll put the what it actually is called in a robo voice here. Vibram Arctic Grip out so. And I'll put a link to an example in the description of the Arctic Tread or Winter Tread or whatever it's called so you can check it out. At JD Michaels 1, I'd take that a step further. Oh, this is a response to Mars Air 23. I'd take that a step further and ask if there are any well-made, welted, recraftable, insulated winter boots out there, not just winter mock toes. Ideally, heritage boots with some insulated lining. I've had no luck finding such a boot, which makes me wonder if there's reasons why they don't seem to exist. I think JK boots and whites both have an insulated version of their boots. I'm pretty sure, I know, actually, yeah, I'm, I'm like 98% confident that JK has an insulated one, and I'm... 90% confident that whites you can special request some sort of insulation and if I'm wrong on one of those for sure one of them does it so there's your answer at JD Michaels one this uh, again is oh, is slash was there ever specific structural slash comfort value in mock toe construction as opposed to say plain toe or cap toe or is the mock toe strictly an aesthetic choice I would say 90% of the time you don't get any actual comfort uh, benefits out of it above and beyond anything else. But if you have a pair of mock toes, it's actually utilizing the ability of a mock toe stitch to extend the vamp height, then you're gonna get some extra comfort because you just have more toe room and wiggle room, especially if you if you lift your toes a lot when you walk and you keep jamming your big toe into the top of the boot, the extra height will help. And that's probably the, really the only benefit to a mock toe, as far as I understand. At Journeyman EDC, I thought at the beginning of Mocktober you had a pair of Truman's mock toes in the lineup, but they never got a video. Just wondering what happened to those. Very observant. Um, I believe that Truman is making some slight changes to their construction. I don't know for sure, but I wanted to hold off and see before I cut that in half. But like the thing is, I still have that boot, and so we'll be able to do like a before and after, what changed, what didn't change. So if anything, holding on for next October, or even sometime during the year, I think will be a more informative video. 
Same thing with Russell moccasins because we had a pair of Russells that we we're going to do, but then they sold the business to somebody else. And now um, I think I've chatted a little bit back and forth with them, but I, the same thing, I just didn't want to to commit a, a video to something that was quickly going to be outdated. And so we'll, we'll work with Russell eventually once they kind of get their everything settled and we figure out a way to work together. At Slim Jim 2584, is there a specific stitch for the mock toe that is stronger slash more waterproof, just better than others? Or does it not matter if modern ones are just glued and the stitching is secondary? I don't even know what that means. Say that, read that one more time. Is there a specific stitch for the mock toe that's stronger or more waterproof or just better than others? Or does it not matter because modern ones are just glued and the stitching is secondary? I'll, I don't fully understand the second half, but for the first half, really the only difference you're going to see is in a hand-sewn mock toe stitch compared to a machine-sewn because the way that a hand-sewn stitch is done, if it's done like a true saddle stitch uh, technique, is you're not linking the threads. You're just weaving them. And so... The problem with uh, the traditional sewing machine technique is that if you've ever popped a stitch on your shirt, the whole thing just comes unraveled. That's not the case with uh, a hand stitch. Each of those threads are independent on top and bottom as it alternates. But if, the thing is, like if you pop a stitch on your mock toe, you just saddle stitch it back together and you can do that at home really easily. So very slight benefit to having a hand sewn mock toe. At Gregory Cooper 3226, Best for high instep and narrow heel, wide foot with wide point at tip of pinky toe. Oof, very specific. Uh, Aldens? I don't know. That sounds like a problem for an Alden, honestly. Narrow heel, wide toe box, pinky toe issues. Yeah, Alden's probably best mock toe that we've seen for that uh, foot anatomy. Or get the toe removed. Yeah, or just chop that pinky toe off. You don't need it anyway. Who needs it? At Aaron Jones 1285, what is the best investment for longevity and durability? I have Thoroughgoods, Redbacks, Earthkeepers, and Bogs. I want a mock toe that's going to last and be a smart investment. The cotton vamp and heel of the Thoroughgoods does not last for a daily wear. I love my Redbacks, but I want a mock toe with that ROI. Is is it the Heritage Red Wings, the Knicks, or a true bespoke mock toe? What to do? Depends on your price range because if you've got the money, the more money you spend, the the more quality you're going to get. So if you have 600 bucks to spend on a pair of Knicks, go watch all the Knicks and, and Red Wing videos and you'll be able to compare and contrast and see what the difference is. You just have more leather that's going to break in. It's a sturdier construction and uh, you have like 100 nails in each boot holding the boot together versus not a single nail in like a Red Wing. That doesn't mean that they're more, uh, it's better because it depends on what you're doing. Like some people don't need a three pound mock toe boot. Some people want a little bit lighter uh, boot. I, as for ROI, your return on investment, I would say anything that you can have recrafted and resold is where you're gonna get that value. So I would stay away from the cemented ones unless you're looking for ultra comfort because that's where the cemented construction boots really come into play is when you're really looking for the most comfortable style of boot. Last question. Ooh, we're already till the end. These are fun. I really enjoyed this because it's easy content to make and it, they're asking a lot of the questions that I haven't actually sat down to think through. So it's, it's pretty cool. So help this video out because I want to do more of these. And like at the end of every single series, it'd be fun. At Zach Green 896, why did they make mock toe boots in the first place? Did the mock toe plain toe come first? <clears throat> I don't know. I think, you know, we kind of covered this in one of the videos where Technically, some of the very first footwear ever made, you could consider it a mock toe boot because they take a piece of leather and they wrap it up around your foot and then they stitch it or lace it or somehow put it together. So technically, that's a mock toe boot. So they, mock toe boots may be the first boots ever and shoes ever made. Um, and what was the rest of the question? I'm just, I need to really work on my my uh, question retention. I, I did this in the Stitch Down podcast too. I was like, and that is a answer to a question that I don't remember. So what was the question? That's not a segue to a sponsor, is it? And thanks to, I don't even thanks think we have a sponsor. Not, no. Yeah. <laughs> did the mock toe or plain toe come first? Yeah, I guess that's the answer, right? It, on the surf, like if you're getting into the technicalities, you could technically say mock toes were first because of that but uh, plain toes are probably first. And I think the real mock toes that are the modern mock toes that we see today stem from the Native Americans, as far as I understand, which I don't, as being from America, you think I'd know more of the American history, but several hundred years old, I would say. And then it's just, you know, got adopted by the workwear industry. So 
it depends on how long the Native Americans have been rocking mocks because plain toe boots have been around since what I don't know the 12th century century because well pre pre like dark ages that is a tough question to answer and I'm not equipped to answer it but I'm gonna say if you go strictly off the technicality of a stitch holding a boot together on the top of the vamp mock toes were first because that's evidence in the very first boots ever s discovered they look like mock toes if you're going off the modern mock toe and the modern boot probably the plain toe and cap toe were first final answer and you can take that to the bank any other questions for you daniel skeen was this my favorite mock toe October ever yes because it spanned like three months and it took us forever to finish it but it was really insightful and interesting um any questions from you are you are you burned out on mock toes at all you'd be surprised that i'm not i i love the look of mock toe boots i think they're it's a really fun way to to get very specific about a style of boot and really dive into different versions of something very specific which it makes for a really interesting series in my opinion because you so you can do anything from like a really cheap cemented boot up to a thousand dollar like handmade bespoke built for your foot boot and so i still love it and then we have a matusa wrapping up pretty soon too so we're gonna do a matusa finale like the video that you probably watched before this one and we'll probably do another q a if you guys like this video and if you support it and if you keep asking us really interesting questions because these are fun i like these um and then uh, as for any questions i have for myself what is the mock toe that i would like to have in my arsenal or my quiver of boots I really want a pair of Russell mocks and uh, I'm just well, there. I think they're restructuring, working through some details. So we'll, we'll do a video with them soon because they are really cool. And I really want a pair. What about you? What's the mock toe you want? Those echoes. Comfort boy, huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah that's fair. Comfort is key, especially when you're constantly breaking in these really heavy Pacific Northwest boots. So I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let us know what you guys think, how I can improve this. Uh, answers too long, too short, too many questions, not enough questions. Just give me some feedback because I want these videos to be successful because they're really fun to do. And thank you guys for everything that you did throughout the last quarter four and first half of this year with the Mocktober series, the Matusa series, all the Alden backlash, good and bad. It's been an awesome year. So even though we're like two months late and now it's 2023, that's the last bit of the Mocktober 2022 series. And thanks for supporting it. Thanks to you, Daniel Skeen, for hopping on the hot mic and asking the questions. Thanks to you guys that asked all the questions. And uh, thank you guys for everything you do. See ya.